It has been 15 years since Red Dead Redemption originally released, and Rockstar has finally brought it over to PC, so is it worth it? Kinda, I guess. I tested this on multiple PCs since I generally play on a 4090, but you know, that doesn't really help a lot of you guys see if it runs any good on your PC because most people don't have Optimus Prime to play on. So I also played it on my RX 580 and a 1060, which were like the first PCs I owned. They are two significantly worse graphics cards on lower end PCs and I played on them maybe for an hour or so. I also played on these because I was a little surprised by the system requirements and minimum specs that Rockstar put out for playing it on PC, which were actually higher than Red Dead Redemption 2's requirements. Which I just think is insane, and I think they're not very accurate. Like, I've played Red Dead 2 on a 1060 before, and my god, I'm surprised it even ran on it, and still does. But Red Dead 1 feels way smoother and more optimized, which, I mean, should be the case since it's much older. The gameplay on all three graphics cards, the 4090, which I was using a Ryzen 9 and 32GB of RAM, definitely overkill, but that's like my main PC, and obviously the game worked flawlessly. But on the 1060 and the RX 580, I have an older Ryzen 5 that I was using for that, and 16GB of RAM. And both of those lower end graphics cards worked fine. On one hand, I'm like, dang, I'm surprised the new game even still runs on a 1060, but then again, it's a port of an almost 15 year old game that just recently launched on the Nintendo Switch. I think you can compare the graphics on a lower end PC to something slightly better than the PS5 slash PS4 port. Like, I think last year they ported the PS3 version over to PS4, which is what you play on if you play it on PS5. And when you compare a lower-end PC to the original, it's way better. Obviously with the benefit of PlayStation being that you have to fiddle around with it less to run smoothly, where with a lower-end PC you have to optimize it a bit, but not really that much. Like, this ran pretty dang smooth. I played more on the 1060 than I did on the 580, and I had, like, zero issues on there. Playing at 1080p, I was getting like 100 frames per second on the 1060 at high settings. And again, no issues. I'd say it looked better than both the original and the PS4 port that's available on PS5, which to me is pretty dang impressive. I've seen people playing this on a GTX 660, and it still looked great. If you have any issues, Red Dead 1 on PC recommends an SSD, where Red Dead 2 was fine with a regular old hard drive. So yeah, on any PC I played it on, it looked pretty dang good in comparison to the original, and even the PS5. This technically is not a remaster. I mean, it's not a remaster at all, it's a port. They have brought the original game and copied it over to PC. But there are for sure some noticeable improvements, enough for me to at least give Rockstar some respect for not calling it a remaster, because I mean, this is probably more of a remaster than the GTA trilogy. Which isn't saying much, but still. What you're seeing here is gameplay from my 4090, and basically the highest end PC you can really have right now. So most people's games are not going to look like this. But when you play on a higher end PC, it is so dang hard not to think of it as a remaster because it is absolutely beautiful. It's the same game, just way higher resolution. And I have to imagine some stuff had to be touched up in order to work with all of the different PC builds out there, and monitor resolutions and all of that. I assume things like the compass, the text, subtitles, and text pop-ups like the town names were somewhat redone since they just look brand spanking new. Either that or just porting it over to a PC in 4K just made it look a million times better. Everything is crystal clear and sharp in comparison to when you play on a PS3. Again, this isn't a remaster, but it feels like a remaster in compared to the old version. Like, the lighting is definitely improved. Is that just due to having a good PC compared to a little old PS3 or PS4? Probably. It feels more responsive like on the original PS3 version, you had a lot more of this, where you try to hop over a fence with your horse and he just sits there like a moron running into it. The PS5 and PC version, I haven't really had that happen, I think like one time on the PC version something like that happened, but it feels so frequent on the PS3. So again, this isn't a remaster, and I like that Rockstar didn't paste the word remaster on it, but if you compare this to other remastered games, like Assassin's Creed 3's remaster for example, you could call this a remaster a million years before you could call that pile of crap a remaster. The PS5 version of the game here versus a 4090 holds up pretty well, but the PC is obviously going to look better since not only is a PS5 going to look worse than my PC, but the PS5 version is really the PS4 version. They didn't port it over to the actual PS5, it's a PS4 game playable on PS5 which is just an odd situation. Comparing the PC version to the original PS3 is like night and day, but there's something about the worst graphics in the original that just fits this world. Like I could play on the PS3 version to this day just fine, the biggest downside to it being just the available frame rate. 
Obviously, it's capped at 30 FPS. The PS4 version gets 60, and the PC gets up to like 144, I think. It's not just that the PC can get more frames and that makes it feel amazing, but some of the cutscenes and the gameplay in the original feel like they drop to about 10 FPS sometimes, which is just horrible. If you haven't touched a better version of Red Dead since the PS3, it's probably not going to feel crazy bad, but once you play one of the newer versions, it's hard to go back to the original. Like, PS3 versus PC is a night and day difference. Which, I mean, should be the case. If you haven't played Red Dead Redemption 1, but you have played the second game, it might feel like the original is a jankier, more boring version of the second game, and that's really just because Red Dead 2 took the original and expanded on everything great about it, like, tenfold. The missions can feel tedious, like especially the introduction at Bonnie's farm, where one of the missions is basically you following her around the farm for a couple of minutes while she just says, This is cow. This is chicken. This is barn. And then herding cattle out to an open area, or herding a group of horses into a canyon. You're just doing various different farm tasks. It's like an Old West farmer simulator with janky controls. Why are you still going? Why are you still going? Stop! <laughs> that to me is the worst of this game. I mean, the first time you're playing this, it's fine. I don't have any bad memories of the first time I played this, but it's like when you go to replay this, you're just trying to burn through this Bonnie section. And that to me is the worst of this game. It's just the intro and some of the more boring missions, but it sets the tone of how slow the rest of the game will be. And a lot of the missions after this have more action and are more entertaining, but they still have some like filler crap that just feels like a time sink, but it's a slow burn that pays off in the end if you're fine taking your time with it. A lot of the missions also go by much faster than the second game, and with how quickly everything loads on an SSD, you can beat Red Dead 1 much, much faster than you can beat Red Dead 2. And you can 100% it way quicker. It's an even bigger difference. Red Dead 2 takes easily 50 to 60 hours just to complete the story, and like 150 hours to 100%, possibly longer. I think it can take people up to like a 250 hours. It is insane. Red Dead 1 felt pretty long at the time, but you can beat the entire story in like 10 hours or less and 100% it, as in get the platinum trophy or all of the Steam achievements in like 30 to 40 hours, probably less than that. Like you can see on Steam when I was recording this, I had like 14 missions done, 16% of the game complete in three hours of gameplay without skipping any cutscenes, and a portion of that time was just me messing around in the town or in the open world. This is such a beautiful moment. Beautiful. So yeah, the load times on PC with an SSD is insane. That might be exaggerating a little bit. Once in a while, there's a, like a brief load time, like when you have to retry a mission. But it is incredible compared to the original. That's probably obvious, but I think it makes a huge difference in the quality of the game and how fast you can complete it. If you're just worried about getting through missions, especially if it's not your first time playing, you can easily fast travel from opening up this menu. On controller, you push the options button or that button beside the pause button on an Xbox controller with the two squares. Open up that menu and build a campsite where you can save, change outfits, and fast travel over to a town near whatever mission is marked on your map. Another tip, the only missable achievement or trophy in Red Dead 1, at least for the new PC and PS4 ported versions, not the PS3 original version, I think the achievements on there are different, is the achievement where you have to ride the same horse for 20 straight story missions. You get a horse in one of the early Bonnie missions. That is one of the best horses in the game, by the way. You can completely ride that thing out for the rest of the game if you wanted to. There's better ones out there, but this one's fine. I recommend sticking to him for 20 missions in order to get that achievement if you're interested in getting all of them. Once you hitch a horse to a post, that's it. That is your new horse and it resets that progress. Your other horse is gone. So over to some of the stuff I dislike. Even if you buy this game on Steam, you still need the Rockstar Games launcher. I already had this from Red Dead Redemption 2, but still, it's annoying and I think it's worth mentioning. Every game out there has its own launcher through its own publisher now, and it's a bunch of extra crap you have to have downloaded on your PC. If you only have a short time to game, you want to quickly load up Red Dead Redemption. You have to wait for it to also load up the Rockstar Launcher, and then if it's been a while since you signed in, you have to remember what the heck login you used for it, and then get a verification code, yada yada yada, eating up my PC, and eating up my time. It does support ultra-wide monitors. I don't play on one, but everyone else says that it does support it. And if you ever want to know if a Steam game supports ultra-wide, just go to the reviews. Even if the game's been out for 30 minutes, the reviews will automatically be tanking. 
Also, the save slots. I know this isn't a remaster, you know, they weren't exactly hitting anything out of the park here, but man, what a missed opportunity. I don't get when games, especially PC games, don't give you a whole lot of save slots, because you still only have three. <laughs> I felt like Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't have a whole lot, but they had like, what, 10 to 20 different save slots? I forgot how few you get for the first game, and it doesn't get any bigger for PC, but I'm sure there's going to be a mod for that at some point. So yeah, Red Dead Redemption is possibly my favorite game of all time. There's only a few other games that even come close to it for like my top 5 or top 10 games of all time, and this is probably number 1. Undead Nightmare, for sure the greatest DLC of all time. We have not got a DLC of this quality since. Except maybe Phantom Liberty. You know, maybe CD Projekt Red's games in general. Even then, I think this is the absolute peak of DLC and what a DLC should be. It's the wacky Wild West type of DLC we should have gotten for Red Dead 2. The story is surprisingly good for this, like, mythical take on a realistic Wild West game. The items you get, like the mythical horses, new weapons, the side missions in there are great. The missions in general are pure fun. You know, except for that one. Sasquatch, a filthy thing was gonna eat my dog when this girl hollered out, and I shot the thing right through the heart. Oh, my God. The PC version, just like the PS5 and Switch ports, also include the Undead Nightmare DLC. So if you purchase this on PC, you'll have Undead Nightmare. But let's be honest, there is no way that this justifies a $50 price tag, and the only way they're gonna get away with it is because it's the first time it's released on PC. Is the game improved? Yeah, I mean, I guess. You get to play at a higher frame rate, higher resolution, sure. I mean, don't get me wrong, this game feels wildly better on PC than it does anywhere else, and it makes the PS3 version feel like crap in comparison. It is no doubt the best way to play, but you're getting less content. On PS3, the online servers are still alive to this day. Granted, there's a lot of cheaters, but it's still active. That was one of the best parts about the original game. That is not included in the PC version or the PS5 and Nintendo Switch ports, but they're selling it at almost the same price it originally released in 2014 as. $50 for a port of a 15-year-old game is crazy. Not as crazy as it was to take the original off of the PlayStation Store, where it was playable on PS5 from PlayStation Now and then sell the port for $50, but still pretty crazy. So should you buy Red Dead Redemption on PC? If you played Red Dead Redemption 2 but haven't played the first and you did not like the second game, you're probably not going to like this one. The biggest complaint people have with Red Dead 2, despite myself thinking it is a phenomenal game, one of the best games ever made, is that it's too slow paced. Red Dead 1 is not really any faster paced, in fact I'd say some of it is much slower, and if you thought the second game was empty, this one is even emptier. For me, that's not a bad thing. I like the fact that the world this game has is like a western simulator, but if you're not a fan of the second game, you're probably not going to think the exploration in Red Dead 1 is any better. If you haven't played before, this game still holds up to this day. The story is great. The side content, I think, some of it is even better. Undead Nightmare is a masterpiece of a DLC. The only real complaint I have is after playing the second game so much, it really took the original and improved on everything, and a lot of the main story missions especially at the intro to the game, just feels a bit boring and tedious after playing Red Dead 2 so much. The biggest thing with the original PS3 version is the low frame rate and the sort of outdated graphics, but it still looks great in my opinion. If you're just now wanting to try it for the first time and have $50 to throw away, sure. But if you've already waited 15 years, I mean just wait a little bit longer for a sale. I bet it'll go on at least a slight sale and drop significantly in price for some of the other sales that'll be coming in the next few months. I think it's a must buy if you want to replay it after a while. Like me, I haven't beaten the game or given a whole lot of time to it since like 2012. So I I've been loving it. I've already almost beat the game again. But $50 is a lot of money, and I highly recommend just waiting a couple of extra months for a sale, but that's up to you. I would say for the PS4 console version, definitely not worth it without a sale. I think that whole situation with them taking the original offline and then reselling it with hardly any noticeable improvements for just $50 is absurd. But that's it. See ya. Alright, now you shot me. Now you're getting knifed. Actually, you know what? Actually, you know what? And then I'm gonna knife you. Oh, come on. Oh, shit! Oh, my God.